Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to finish up the Django REST framework series by deploying our Django REST framework API on Heroku. So before we get started, what we're going to need, we're going to need an account with Heroku. So you can go ahead and create one just at heroku.com and we'll create a free um, app here just to, for testing purposes. So it shouldn't cost you anything to, to, to do this. And then once you have that account created, we'll want to go ahead and create a new app and get started with this. So to create a new app, up here in the corner, there'll be a new button and you'll click create new app. And you can give it a name here if you'd like, or you can leave it blank and it'll give you one, give it, give you a name for you, which I'm going to do here. So I go ahead and just hit create app, leaving that blank. It'll then generate something with this random name up here. And then down here, deploy using git Heroku git is the commands we'll follow here to deploy this um, on Heroku. So we'll follow these instructions here. So if you get lost, um, just follow these right here. So first we need to go ahead and log in. So I'll open up a terminal here and I am already in the project right here. So there's my main PY and everything. So here I can go ahead and type Heroku login. Press any key, it should open up a new window and then you can click log in and it should log you in, okay? And now we're logged in. So now we can go ahead and create a new Git repository. I think I already have one. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Git status. Um, no, I do not. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do a Git init. And then I'll go ahead and do a Git add and a dot, a period, to add everything. Do a Git status. And there's all of our files added. And then you can see down here. Um, it adds the remote first. I'm going to go ahead and commit these changes first. So I'm going to do a git commit dash M and just do initial commit or whatever message you want there. Uh, and then we need to go ahead and grab this line right here, this Heroku gets remote and the name of the app. So we'll go ahead and copy that, come back here and we'll go ahead and paste that in there and add it there. Okay. Now with that added, we should have everything ready to go. So when we deploy this, we're going to run into a bunch of issues and I'm going to work through those on camera here on video to hopefully help you if you get stuck on anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and just try pushing this now and see what issues we get first. So if I go ahead and just do a git push Heroku master, it will then it'll try to push everything and we fail right away. And you'll see the first issue here is we have no build pack. So for a Django project on Heroku, we need two files. First we need is a requirements.txt, and this will tell uh, Heroku what to install for our app. So we can create that automatically by opening a terminal up here and doing a pip freeze, and then we'll do the greater than sign and then requirements.txt. And that will create this requirements.txt file here uh, with everything we need in here. Next, we need to go ahead and create a proc file. So this is a, a file for Heroku. And so it'll be, it'll, you'll save it as just proc with a capital P, P-R-O-C file with, no, with nothing else, just like that. And this file needs two lines in it. We need to first put web colon and then put unicorn, then, then the name of our app, which is music underscore API, uh, which is the name of this current project. Uh, if you have a different project name, put that in here and then dot WSGI. And then next we'll do a release colon python manage.py migrate. And that will run any migrations if we need to uh, when we deploy as well. And this just sets up the unicorn process we're going to use to actually run the uh, application. But this is something we need to install with pip. So before we go any further, let's do a pip install unicorn to install it. And now if we do a pip freeze requirements.txt, we should then, we open that file up, we should see that right here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and try pushing this and see what happens next. So I'll go ahead and just do a git push Heroku master. Oh, actually, before I go any further, I completely forgot. Whenever we make changes here, we need to go ahead and push those to um, make, add them to a git commit as well. So we do a git add, a period to add everything. 
And that should have our new file here, requirements.txt. And let's make sure we pull this proc file. Uh, it's not in the right spot. Let's make sure we um, I'll just uh, make sure it's inside of our app there. So we put that inside there. Okay. So now let's go ahead back here. Uh, we'll do a get a little CD into the music app here. Do a get status, get add period, get status. And then there we have our proc file and our requirements.txt. We'll do a git commit updated. Um, let's do config or whatever. Uh, then we'll do a git push Heroku master again. So run that same command. Should have it back here somewhere right there. We'll run that again. And now it should find uh, the Python app detected. So that's good. And it's by default, it's running Python 3.10.4, which should be the newest version at the time of this recording, at least. And then you'll see here, we run into this issue, could not build wheels for backports.zoneinfo. And there seems to be some issue with Python 3.10 for some reason, uh, at least at the time of this recording. Maybe when you uh, try this, it'll work fine. But if you have the same issue, now what we can do is we can specify a different Python version. So we, we use Python 3.10.4, but we, what we can do is inside of our project here, we can create another file and we can save this as runtime.txt. And then in here, we can put the Python version. So I can do Python dash three point, and I'll do 8.13. Um, you can do a different version if you want, but that's what I'm going to do in this one. And then we'll save that, make sure all this is saved. And then once again, we'll come back to our app here and we'll come down here. We'll do a git add period, git commit dash in with a message and then do a git push Heroku master. And we'll try this again. And now you'll see we run into an issue with uh, our collect static command. So in our case, I don't believe we really need collect static. I don't think we have any static files anywhere. But if you do, uh, you're, you want to keep this. If you don't want it, you can add this. You can run this command right here. But if you want to keep it, we can also do something else. And you see up here, um, it says without having set the static underscore root setting. Uh, so what we can do is we can go ahead and set this setting, and that should fix this issue as well. So if we jump inside of our settings set py, scroll down here to the bottom. We have a static URL, but no static root. So let's go ahead and add a static root. So we'll do a static underscore root equals base dir slash static. We'll save that. And then once again, we'll come up here and we can go ahead and add everything. Updated settings.py. And then we'll do a git push Heroku master. And there we go. That time it finished with no errors, but the sweet still need to be one more thing we'll need to change. Uh, let's go ahead and test this out and see what this does. So if I go ahead and just copy the URL for it, I can jump into something like Insomnia, which I've been using to test. I can go to, um, let's go. So we'll go to our app name slash albums, which is one of our models, one of the things we were using to test earlier. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a get request there and see if we get anything back. And you'll see here we're getting a 503 application error. And so we can test this and see what's going wrong. If we jump into um, our browser here, come up here, look inside of our logs we get an issue saying no web process is running. Oh, there's an issue right now with my proc file. Uh, I moved it and it messed things up. Let's go ahead and just copy that in real quick. Um, that's not the error I was expecting to get. So let's go ahead and just fix that one real quick. We'll copy this, paste this in here, save that. And now let's try this one more time real quick. Um, I had to move my proc file, I put it in the wrong spot. Uh, if yours is in the right spot, you probably won't get that error. Uh, let's go ahead now and try this again. Updated proc file. We'll push that now. Okay, there we go. Now it's deployed. We'll come back to Insomnia. Hit send again here. And this is what I was expecting it the other time. So we got a disallowed host error. So it's saying that our app name is not 
an allowed host and we need to add it to allowed host. So we jump back into our code here and we go to our settings.py. We scroll up here to the top. You'll see we have this allowed host list here that's empty. And if we push it to a remote repository like this or a remote app like this, we need to add it to the allowed host. So if I go back to Insomni here, it tells it what it is right here. Warm-cove-73137. Yours will be different, but make sure you get your correct one. Go ahead and copy that. And then we will go ahead and paste that inside of the allowed host, just like that. Save that. And then once again, come back here. We will do a git add all, git commit updated settings.py. We'll just do allowed hosts. And then we'll do a git push Heroku master once again. Okay, there we go. Now we come back here. We'll do a send again. And then it goes through, there's nothing there. We went ahead and did a post. And uh, actually I'll go to, yeah, it was fine. We'll try adding a new album now out of JSON body. We'll add a test album. Okay, there we go. Make sure you have a trailing slash here at the end, otherwise you might get some issues. We go ahead and add a title and we add an artist field and then create a new um, album here. We go back to a git now and do a send and then gives us our one album we just created. So everything's working great now. So now we have it, we now have it uh, correctly deployed on Heroku. And so just real quick to go over that again, because there's lots of setup steps we had to do. Uh, first things first, you need to have a requirements.txt, and you can do that with pip freeze. Also need a proc file. We have two lines um, for the setup here. I'll uh, just copy these in. Uh, right now, there's an issue with Python 3.10, so go ahead and put Python-3.8.13 uh, in the runtime.txt if you're also having that same issue. Inside of our settings.py, we also need to make sure we add the new app name to our allowed host, and that we add a static root here at the bottom. And that is all we need to do for the very basic level of getting things up and running. Um, up here in our settings, you also have the databases right here. So if you want to change the databases, uh, Heroku has lots of great documentation on how to do that. You can add a new database on Heroku and then change what you need here and everything else just like that. Uh, they ha also have on their uh, page here, production check. And you can see here, we don't have the setup for production yet, but it gives you a list of things you can go through to go ahead and get it ready for production. If that's something you want to do, if you want to create an actual production ready application, um, you can go through these steps. Uh, this does cost money to set these all up. So the free version is good for testing, but if you want anything else, you have to pay for it and you can see that all in here if you'd like to do that. But hopefully that was helpful and helped get you at least up and running so you at least have something up on Heroku that you can play around with and and, and uh, try out. And that will probably complete the Django REST framework. Hopefully you found these videos useful. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.